Welcome to this reflection on the day which many Christians call Holy Monday. I'm Jeff Marshall Taylor and I'm a lay reader at Christ Church, Jolly Wood. We're in the last week of Lent, the special days that end on Thursday, Maundy Thursday. In the 40 days of Lent, we've tried to think what it meant for Jesus to go alone into the Judean desert to spend some time in a strategic assessment of his mission, the mission to be the long-awaited Christ, the saviour of the world. Jesus fired up with an unshakable sense of the bond between him and his heavenly father, Jesus left the desert. As the Bible account says, he resolutely set out for Jerusalem. Jerusalem, that great city, would have been packed with Jews from all around the Mediterranean. They're there to celebrate the week-long Passover festival in and around the temple in Jerusalem. Today is actually the second day of the eight Passover days that Jews around the world are celebrating this year. Especially during the last three years of his ministry, Jesus showed flashes of divine authority. But now, having left the desert, he strode up the road from Jericho with a new, unshakable resolve to stamp his authority as the Son of God, not only on both the Roman and Jewish authorities, but on everyone, male and female, young and old, Jews and Gentiles. Yesterday we celebrated Palm Sunday, and my focus now, this morning, is on Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21, the next bit of the narrative. On Palm Sunday, we remembered how Jesus, with a staged dramatic effect, chose to enter the city as a king of peace, riding on a donkey. He accepted the shouts of a large crowd that had gathered. Their cheers would have echoed off the high walls of the narrow stone streets. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. For a few days, when Jesus arrived in Jerusalem, he had welcome lodging, a sort of bed and breakfast, with friends in Bethany, and that's a village just outside the city. That was to be his base, where he could be physically restored in all the demands of the challenges ahead. Today on Holy Monday we reflect on some of the ways by which Jesus proclaimed his distinctive authority in this city where he would soon face his arrest, his trial and his death. Q, a fig tree. On his walk into the city that morning, Jesus was a bit hungry and he fancied a fig for breakfast. He spots a fig tree, but oh no, no disappointment. There are no figs on it. Anyway, Jesus rebuked the tree and at once its leaves withered. What's it all about, his disciples wondered. And he explained that the withered fig tree was an illustration of what can be achieved by praying with faith and with authority. When he reached the city, Jesus headed for the temple, that huge focus for Jews in their national and their religious life. He'd been there the day before, 
but yet again he was appalled to see under the outer porticos traders making a quick buck from all those who were toing and froing there arriving at the temple to worship but more than that the bucks would have been big bucks as well as quick given the thousands of travellers were milling about the place these uh, travellers and Jesus had an encounter and it went beyond that because of the temple authorities were standing around seeing what was going on and during the day there developed this encounter particularly between the Jewish leaders and Jesus. They challenged his authority and he challenged theirs. They turned a blind eye to the money changers. What the religious leaders though could not see what, what even the weak and vulnerable could see was that Jesus was a special person who spoke with divine authority. People with disabilities came up to him to ask for his assistance. They saw his authority. Children, and it seems that there were loads of them running about in the temple, Children could see that there was something special about Jesus. They saw his authority and they cried out, Hosanna to the Son of David. Other people around him saw him, and I quote, do wonderful things. So they recognised what the chief priests and the leaders of the law didn't recognise was that he came from God and God was in him. That was the source and the extent of his authority. Well, today, you and I can come to Jesus, the same Jesus. Whatever our difficulties, whatever we face, I'm greatly reassured that in all the uncertainties of life, and we've known a lot in the last year. This same Jesus is with each one of us today. We can know his life-giving presence. He walks with us, whoever we are, wherever we are, whatever our circumstances, by day and by night. We have it on his authority. What he wants for his world, he wants for us, for you, for me. Well, by the end of that day, they turned back to Bethany. Jesus and his friends walked along the same road they walked along in the morning. And, of course, they passed the fig tree. There it was, with its withered leaves. But now the message of the fig tree made complete sense to the disciples because they'd been in the temple. They'd seen in Jesus the touch of God. Lives changed. Moral decency held. God worshipped in spirit and in truth. This week, as we track Jesus' steps onwards towards his last supper, his trial and the cross, we can be he assured with confidence that just as he lived with God's authority, so that same authority will be in his dying and in his glorious resurrection. Hosanna for the son of David. I'm going to end with a psalm, a prayer poem, that worshippers have sung for centuries in that temple in Jerusalem. And many of us have said and sung in churches. We know it, Psalm 95 
as the Venite. Here it is. <clears throat> Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let's raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have shaped the dry land. So come, let us bow down, let us worship, let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the flock of his care. Today, listen to his voice. I end with a blessing. May God the Father enrich us with his grace. May God the Son make us holy in his love. May God the Holy Spirit strengthen us with his joy. May God who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit bless us and keep us in eternal life. Amen. <laughs>